Hello, everyone. This is our last chapter, chapter 20. This is about prokaryotes and viruses. All right, so we only have three sections in this specific chapter. Oops, let me go back here. We only have three sections in this specific chapter. Um, we're looking at like microbiology or the study of microscopic organisms, things that are very, very small. So this first section, 20.1, is about prokaryotes or things called bacteria. So prokaryotes are, are, are I'm sorry, microbiology is a study of microscopic organisms, and uh, they're just really small things. You can see our cell here. I love this image to show you the size comparison. You have our cell here, you have a prokaryotic cell here, and you have a virus. So these are things that are even smaller than our cells. This is a Petri dish that we grow bacteria on. We're not going to do any of that growing this year, but if you go to AP Biology, uh, you will see some uh, bacteria growth on some Petri dishes. Okay, next. Uh, prokaryotes. We already know a lot of this stuff. Um, prokaryotes, there's no nucleus. Uh, that's the definition of, of, of being a prokaryote. It doesn't have a nucleus. Chromosome is circular. So you can see the bacterial chromosome here. It's circular, not like the X form that uh, eukaryotes have. They also have these smaller circular plasmids. They're, um, they're just smaller portions of DNA that are very similar to like a chromosome. But they're just smaller just in general in size. And they can actually transmit these plasmids from bacteria cell to bacteria cell. Um, and they also don't have any membrane-bound organelles. So don't think that bacteria is a bad word. Um, the media and just, you know, you know, like products portray it as a bad word and bad thing. But understand, we probably wouldn't be here without bacteria. Uh, you have billions of bacteria in your gut and just throughout your body right now. Um, they, we have a symbiotic relationship with them. So bacteria is not a bad word. There are some bacteria that will kill you and they're very dangerous. But overall, bacteria are either neutral or they do help us uh, in, in certain circumstances. All right, interesting facts about bacteria. There are more bacteria in your mouth than there are people in this world. A dollar bill has over 3,000 different types of bacteria on it. And when two people kiss, they exchange between 10 million and 1 billion bacteria cells. Oof, it's a lot of bacteria. Okay, the shapes here. We have three main shapes. We have caucus, which is spherical. You can see the circular nature here. We have bacillus, which is a straight rod. I call this like the pill. So you can see it looks like just like a regular pill. And the spirilli, this is a curved or spiral shaped bacteria cell. So you don't have to know any of these examples, but you can see we have streptococcus. That is the, it's an example of a bacteria that is the circular shape. Lactobacillus, that's some bacteria that make uh, like yogurts, cheeses, uh, pickles, wines, and sauerkraut. And then the Lyme disease, I forget how it's, it's like Borrelia, uh, Burgdorferia. Um, this is a this spiral shape. And I actually had Lyme's disease, which is a bacterial infection. All right, going through this uh, list here, this is, here we go, bacillus. We got the spirilli. We got the caucus here, another caucus, a spur, I'm oh, sorry, a bacillus, and then a spirilli down here as well. Uh, so these are some of the diseases that can be caused by bacteria. So you can see tuberculosis, strep throat, scarlet fever, diphtheria, Lyme disease. All of these are caused by bacteria. So again, not all bacteria are bad, but some of them are. More interesting facts about bacteria. 72% of shopping carts have fecal bacteria on them. One in six phones have fecal bacteria on them. Gym equipment has 1.3 million colony forming units of bacteria. A toilet seat only has 3,200. It's because toilet seats are usually cleaned off more than gym equipment. And, and it's just, you know, the nature of, of, of life. Um, food dropped on the floor gather about 150 to 8,000 bacteria every five seconds. So that five second rule really doesn't apply. And the number of germs on your fingertips doubles after using the bathroom. So that's why we got to wash your hands. All right. The, oops, let me go back here. The prokaryotes, they divide by something called binary fission, where it's just asexual reproduction. They double their DNA and then they split. So you can see here our DNA being doubled and then they split. And the daughter cells are genetically identical to the parent cells. This is what it looks like in real time. You can see the splitting here. And what you're going to see is an exponential growth, which we'll talk about next with this bacteria. So what actually happens is every time they double, it goes from like 1 to 2 to 4 to 8 to 16, 32. And it kind of seems very slow at first, which it is. But once you get to these large numbers, you can, you know, you're doubling thousands and millions and even billions of these bacteria cells. That's why they can grow very rapidly. a cool video here. So you can see how just a couple bacteria cells can grow in the right conditions very, very quickly. This is called exponential growth. So it's a doubling effect. So you just keep on doubling, 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 and then you have billions of these bacteria cells. 
More interesting facts, compared to a toilet seat, cell phones have 18 more bacteria on them. There are about 100 times more bacteria on a menu, like at a restaurant, than a toilet seat. The average keyboard has 200 times more bacteria than a toilet seat. And the average office desk has 400 times more bacteria than a toilet seat. Crazy, crazy. What do you call the back of a cafeteria? The bacteria. Okay, bad joke. This ends section 20.1. All right, 20.2. Looking at viruses, we gotta go back here. There we go. Viruses are not bacteria. Viruses are much smaller than bacteria. So you can see, again, let's talk about our eukaryotic cell here, our nucleus of our eukaryotic cell. We have our prokaryotic cell. Viruses are even smaller than that. I always give the comparison that if our room here at Belfont, room 117, if our room here at Belfont is a prokaryotic cell and the viruses you see hanging above you are the size of a virus, then this whole school would be like the size of a eukaryotic cell. So think about you have trillions of eukaryotic cells. Viruses are very, very small. Viruses are an infectious agent made up of either DNA or RNA wrapped in a protein called, called a uh, capsid. This capsid um, can be also uh, enveloped by something called an envelope. This is the plasma membrane from a previous infected cell. So you can have a non, or it's, it's called a naked virus, but you could have a non-enveloped um, virus or you could have an enveloped virus. You can see the plasma membrane. Now, viruses are very unique in the uh, aspect of biology. Like, you know, we talk about all these characteristics of life and viruses do... Um, they do have a lot of the characteristics of something that's living, but they're not really technically living. There's a big debate still that, that about if viruses are living or not. Um, you have scientists on each side of it, but it's one of those gray areas of science where it's just like, eh, it's, it's not a perfect definition. And we talked about how it's just falls in that gray area. But anyways, viruses don't have a nucleus. They don't have organelles. They don't have cytoplasm. So they're non-cellular. It means they're not made of a cell. Now you might think, hey, you just you just said that these viruses do contain the plasma membrane. Yes, but they technically stole it from a previous cell, so they didn't really make it themselves. They, they, they don't have the uh, equipment to make new uh, cellular components. They just steal the ones from other cells. So you can see I have a lot of different types of viruses. You can see there's a couple different uh, uh, shapes of viruses here. Other uh, shapes of viruses here. This is called a um, bacteriophage. It specifically goes off after bacteria. If you watch Jimmy Neutron, um, there was an episode with a bacteriophage here. All right, reproduction of a virus. So viruses reproduce in a pretty interesting way. So they first attach to a, a specific target cell. Then they inject their genetic material and a bunch of enzymes into that cell. The enzymes are going to dissemble the cell parts within the cell. And then that genetic material is going to create more viruses within the cell. Then the cell is going to release those viruses to infect more cells. And sometimes the, the cell can actually burst, having a ton of these viruses released it and, and infecting a lot of cells around it. And then this process will repeat itself um, until either the organism dies or the organism fights the virus off. Now, I'm not going to show you the video here, but I'm going to attach it if you're watching it online, attach it to the uh, Google Classroom post. So check out the uh, virus reproduction video. It's a very interesting video. All right, that's the end of 20.2. All right, 20.3. 20.3 is the germ theory of disease. This is our last section of the whole year. Oh man, we're there. So germ theory disease states that diseases are caused by microorganisms. Um, germs infect humans, which cause disease. Uh, a germ or a pathogen it refers to something like a virus, bacterium, and even protists, fungi, and some, something called a prion. We won't be that, that specific, but um, the germ theory disease came about around 100 years ago. So it wasn't always here. Actually, uh, years and years ago, so this is like hundreds and hundreds of years ago, some people thought that if you were a bad person, you got diseases. And obviously, that's not true. Um, it's either genetic sometimes uh, with like certain disorders having a mutation, or in this case, the germ theory disease states that these, um, these germs or these pathogens are going to be responsible for causing um, uh, uh, the diseases that we see. Antibiotics. So antibiotics are a chemical that kills bacteria, um, and they also kill good bacteria as well. So they're a type of chemical that inhibits bacterial growth. And uh, these weren't identified until, um, I want to say the early or like the, around the 1900s, I want to say later 1900s, like during, um, it was definitely after the World War One or World War Two, somewhere around that time. I got to double check my, my, my date on that. But basically, a lot of people in wars uh, didn't really die from the battle. They died. They died from infections of these bacteria afterwards because they didn't have antibiotics. And when we found antibiotics, we're like, oh my gosh, we can save all these people, which is great. 
Um, the problem that we're going to talk about later is the antibiotic resistance that we're seeing now. And this is like a number two or three, like things we need to care about in the future, things we need to th figure out in the future so we, we don't cause us more harm. So remember, you take antibiotics to kill bacteria. You take antivirals to decrease the virus abilities to, uh, ability to reproduce. Um, this also boosts your immune system. Antibiotics will not work on viral infections. You might go to your doctor very sick, and you might be like, oh my gosh, I want medicine, I want antibiotics. They're not going to give it to you because antibiotics will not work on viruses. Antivirals will help you fight viruses. Antivirals will not help you fight antibiotics. They're two separate uh, 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 things. They just don't work against each other. So you have to remember antivirals do not help you with um, like fighting a specific bacterial infection. Antibiotics don't help you fighting, uh, you don't, does, doesn't help you fight uh, viruses. All right, so germ theory, uh, moving on here. So this is called antibiotic resistance where the bacteria are, um, they're, they're evolving around our antibiotics. You can see here, this is a Petri dish with a bacteria that hasn't uh, evolved. This antibiotic resistance, you can see how the antibiotics are just killing all the bacteria even very close to it. This is a bacteria that has that antibiotic resistance. So nowadays, you go to if you have a bacterial infection, you go to the doctors. There, you're you know you get the medicine and, and you're um, you get better. But what the thought is, and and we're already seeing it, is the bacteria have a resistance against our antibiotics. So you're not going to be cured by getting that antibiotic. And again, millions and billions of people have died by these infections, you know, years ago. If we don't have the antibiotics to fight these diseases, it's going to be trouble for us. So um, doctors are being much more uh, specific on when they, they give out antibiotics. All right, this is the end of the biology notes. Congrats.